I'm making this video kind of on a whim. I don't have a script. I don't have anything. But you know what? I think I know what I'm talking about. And that's all that matters. Hello! My name is Ash and this is the first video on my potential YouTube channel because I know that I want to post some more stuff later so I just want to make this video because this video is so important to me and I I've never seen anybody make this video. It's like an unspoken thing in the AP world. Um, not in like the, not in the whole AP world because I see other APs talk about this more than AP art. In, I believe every single AP class, the sixth point, which is the quality point, and typically you hear most like advertised is a one through five. One, basically, you suck. Three is what you need to pass. Five is perfection. That's great. Like you're gonna get a lot of credits in college for year five. Like you might potentially be able to exempt a class. You, it, it's, it's, it's great to make a five. But something that nobody really talks about is the six, the unicorn point. It's called the unicorn point because it's so rare to get and like it's barely ever seen. I believe that the percentage of people in AP art that make a six, last time I checked, was 12%. I will check that and insert the thing here. I'm, I'm not 100% confident. The reason why a lot of people don't talk about it is because it only exists for that bell curve because just like barely anybody makes a one, you need something to even it out. The six only really exists for that bell curve, which is why it's so hard to get. So a lot of people don't really talk about it. They'll maybe mention it like at the beginning of the year, or maybe they'll like bring it up when you're like practicing writing an essay or something like that. AP Lit, it's the sophistication point, which is just you being fancy. So for AP Art, the point is the quality point. And basically the quality point is just, you have just a greater quality of a piece. What does that even mean? It really just depends on the grader. But, but, here's the thing. That's why nobody talks about it, because it's so subjective, because there's really no way to gauge, okay, how do you get this point? And all the theories on YouTube, like when I was trying to get this point, I was in AP art 11th grade and senior year. But again, a lot of the people on YouTube that say that, they had like, they did half of their portfolio in the 11th grade half of it their senior year. I did not. I did an entire portfolio of my 11th grade, entire portfolio my senior year. I looked all over on YouTube for things about how to make a six. People showing their six, like their pieces that they made a six on. There's nothing. I couldn't find anything. I don't even know if there is anything. I hope that this video does well, not only because like, you know, I would like for it to do well, but I so genuinely want somebody that needs this to get the help that they need. I did find very few resources the summer of my senior year that I like. It was some very few examples of sick. Very few examples of sixes. I was able to find them and I analyzed them. I figured out, I was like, okay, what is the key factor? In all of these. I'm gonna just be bringing the inside info of how I made a six. So I'm gonna be looking at it on my iPad because most of these peaches, 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 most of these pieces are huge <laughs> so I do not want to bring them out. Another thing, this past year it was only digital submissions, there were no physical submissions. That varies year to year and you do submit your quality pieces, which is one, it's basically five of your best works. You do submit those, typically those are the ones that get sent in person. I did not have to physically send them in. You might have to physically send them in, so just make sure that your craftsmanship is perfect. When I was studying the common thing with all of them, this was one of them, and hopefully I insert like a video of me scrolling through this article. The common thing that I noticed, and here are a few more, here are a few more, okay. These are all examples of sixes. And I noticed 
a common thing, a common theme between every single one of them is collage. They eat up collage so much. I don't know why, honestly. It just looks fancier, in my opinion. I genuinely think it just looks fancier. Blush element that I used mainly were torn up pieces of paper, paint splashes, and quotes from my diary. Those were the big ones. Make sure everything that you do has a reason. I planned out my schedule, my turn-in schedule, for my entire school year. If I still have that, I'll add a picture here of it, and like I'll zoom in and I'll add them. I knew that there were certain huge projects that I wanted to do, so I made sure that okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this piece smaller, and I'll get it done faster, so that then I have a huge amount of time to do this massive piece. I gave myself like a month to do a huge piece. Um, because they love bigger pieces, that's another thing. They eat up those big pieces, um, because it takes more time, and time is good. The more time that you spend, that is something that a lot of people don't think exists. It's like, it doesn't matter how much time you spend on it, because if it looks good, that's, that's fine. These professionals can tell. They can tell how much time that you spent on a piece. You absolutely have to spend at minimum, in my opinion, if you want a six, 40 hours on a piece. I'm, I'm wholeheartedly strong on 40 hours. It's gonna kill you if you've never spent that long in a piece before. No matter what grade you're in, whether or not you're in ninth grade seeing this and you know some seniors that are taking APR, you know that that's a course that's offered. If you're in 10th grade, start practicing. Start practicing maybe if you're typically at 15 hours like force yourself to make it 20 hours. Okay, Ash, what happens if I'm done with my piece at 15 hours? See what else that there is to do. Or, okay, there's nothing else that you can do. Plan out how you can just exert yourself. I just pushed myself to the limit, made sure that I was learning something with every single piece, because there it is, that's another thing that they love. They love experimentation. And I'm also going to be walking through the things that I put in the description for each of my pieces because for your like concentration section you have to put like the materials and then let me see you have to put the materials and the processes for every single piece and in the processes section another thing that I saw very common in every single one of the sixes is that they talked about experimentation in their processes they were like this is something like I experimented with yada yada or I learned something something with it. They love seeing that you're experimenting and that you're growing because that they know that you're serious and most of the time they can see that experimentation. I asked my teacher about this whether or not they want to physically see growth so like if one piece starts off at like an estimated score of a five and they want to see that growth to a six they typically want to see consistency. The sixes all Every single piece has a consistent style. You can see the artist style. You can see their artistic expression in all of their pieces. That's a huge thing. I should really start walking through my pieces, shouldn't I? This is my concentration statement. In my concentration, I focused on the impact that isolation, when not desired, can have on the human mind. I derived the ideas for my pieces from my own experience with isolation, where I spent 17 months almost completely disconnected from society as a result of COVID-19. I wanted to use this concentration to explain to others my experience with isolation as one that was filled with struggles that I would never wish on anyone that ultimately caused me to understand myself more deeply. Editor, me here. I just realized that I told you guys my um, concentration statement, but I did not do my um, the other one. I didn't read the thing that's like show evidence of practice or whatever, so I have my iPad, so I'm gonna read it. In my concentration, my main focus was on collage, color, and symbolic imagery. As I worked, I explored how to utilize collage to create meaning. I began to plan the placement of quotes, one collage element, to make unique meanings. Example, in Project 7, having the quotes be in the shadows and then very prominent, showing how I had to face the truth. Color was also essential in showing the fall and rebirth of my mental health. As I practiced color and collage elements, the more comfortable I became with adding small symbolic elements in my works. Example in Project 9, the fence sheep and the freed birds. Yeah. 
so in that section they like 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 i i believe that i have already said like that they love experimentation yeah yeah i did and practice and revision so like learning from your previous mistakes in your projects that's what they mean by revision so yeah basically what you want to write there is mainly experimentation and going into it going into your school year you already know now that they want experimentation so make sure that you do things make sure that you push yourself in order to be able to have something that's not bs to actually write in there i have another tidbit they they don't want to see art that a teenager would make and now that it kind of sucks and i'll explain they're kind of very biased when it comes to like digital art or cartoony art it doesn't support like a grandiose meaning they want to see some sort of great expression idea something that could be put in a gallery that's a great way to say it which can be very annoying depending on what your art style is some people nowadays wouldn't consider that museumable or something so you might have to do a little bit of compromise if the score is really important to you something i really struggled with this year or this past year was i based everything that i did around the six don't go crazy don't do that now I'm actually gonna get to my thesis. Okay, this is the first piece that I did. I didn't completely have a full grasp of what I wanted to do yet, and I'll read my thing now. Materials, you can see them. It's just the materials that I used. I experimented with pops of color in the flowers in order to emphasize the emotion of the piece. This is my second piece. I worked with more acrylic than I had in the previous work to support the meaning of the work. Basically, like, because I had so much more time to just focus inwardly, I was like, you know, you might not actually be a girl. Never thought about that. So that's basically what this piece is. Outside, you have the pink splotches. Inside, you have the blue connecting splotches where it's like, oh my god, I'm a boy. And then I have diary quotes from the time that that was going on. This piece is boredom. So it's like after you go through the hype, you're like, oh my god. I ran out of things to do. It was pretty boring. I became freer with my style with this project, so I used more collage elements. The collage was basically supposed to symbolize like the crumbling of your emotions. Like you're like, oh, the world's starting to fall apart. And that's what that's for. I used Spotify codes to also insert songs that I listened to at that time that directly correlated with the thing that I was going through. I should make a playlist of what all the songs are. I'll also put that in the bottom. This next piece is Loneliness. This is actually one of my best, and I put it in my quality section. Another little tidbit, your quality section is 60% of your score. You have to make sure that your quality section is pristine. I'll read both the description from the concentration and the quality section. I worked with emphasis in this piece with the clock in the center, which taught me to be bolder. I did that at the very end because my teacher was like, it needs something. And I was like, I can add a giant clock. And I did. It was terrifying. And then this is what I wrote for the quality section. I used the clock to display how at the same time I was alone, people were having fun at school. That time sucked. Um, that was something I literally did every single day. Something I found very helpful with is just an overall... APR thing. Do something that is personal. That's something that I found very helpful. You stay motivated. Last year's portfolio, I got so worn down of that idea. I just, it wasn't, it wasn't giving anymore. My next piece, this one actually won first place at my county arts art show, which is pretty cool that was pretty that was a good motivator i was like okay i might actually be onto something here this one is disassociation and my processes i was very free with this project letting my brush strokes create stronger emotions in the work the ideas the fade from vivid red to blurry black creates an image of the process of losing touch with reality not much else to say about this piece so this is my next one this one is depression um this one's huge 
This was my first massive one. It's 28 by 16. Um, this thing is like this big, which is why I'm not pulling it out. Um, processes, texture and value was very important in this piece. Two elements I hadn't focused on before. Not in this concentration. This piece was hard because I wanted to do the random strips of paper for the collage. How do you make something look random without it being random? That was my main, in a sentence, what I struggle with with this piece. This is one of my least favorite ones. Um, it is confusion. And I experimented with the layout to show different emotions that were felt in the same room. Those were torn pieces of paper. It did not look like that, in my opinion. It don't look like torn pieces of paper. Also remember, they only look at the pieces in your concentration for around 10 to 30 seconds. It probably didn't even register that it was supposed to be torn paper, but you know what? It didn't really matter because I guess that they got the idea. Still upsets me. <laughs> okay, this is one also that is in my um, quality section. Remember another tidbit. I'm gonna insert it here. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna have to scav scavenge the internet again to have to find this. They like seeing things that are visually, like, it, it like stimulates like your mind. Like, you're like, okay, this thing, this thing, this thing. It like really engages you. You want to be able to like follow something that's, it makes them look at it longer, which is very helpful because you want them to look at it for as long as possible. Um, I love this piece. I worked heavily with symbolism with highly saturated color in order to create my message. I'm actually gonna walk through this one because it's kind of silly and I like it. And also, if any of you subscribe, you're gonna see, you're gonna see more Danganronpa stuff. I'm so sorry. Okay, so it starts with me in my room and I'm like just dead watching Danganronpa. Um, and then I'm being like sucked into the TV. And then I'm there, like I'm in Danganronpa, but the thing is, is that you can't escape your reality that you're in. So it's like lower saturated. Um, I'm like split apart from it. I'm not actually part of it. Yeah, that's it. This is what I put for the quality section. I display the process of escaping into media just to learn that it can't let you escape reality. This one, this one, honestly, might have been the key to me making a six. This one's huge. I spent forever on it. This is, this is trapped. Um, I worked with emphasis and symbolism in this piece more in order to create the meaning, in order for the meaning to be created fully. The main things, the style, this was like one of the core pieces that tied my style completely together. I have a bunch of collage elements going on. There's symbolism in what I'm wearing. Every single thing in this piece has a meaning. That is such a great component. You have to make sure that everything that you do has a meaning. Nothing can be like, yeah, I made it up after I finished the project, which I did. I am not exempt to that. I did that like all year last year. And I made a five last year, but I didn't make a six. So it's like, it'll get you somewhere. But the, when they're looking at your quality pieces, they can tell because if they cannot make that connection like automatically, because like if you had to make it up, then it's like, they probably aren't gonna get it. This is peace. Basically, damn Charlie. Don't I didn't use any elements that were the same in my other pieces like quotes to symbolize the end. Again, this is just a great example of I didn't leave anything up to chance. I made sure that every single piece had the quotes and all of that going on in order to symbolize how chaotic and falling apart my life is. And then when I'm like, I'm gonna end it all, there's, there's nothing left. Like there's no quotes or anything. So it makes it stand out. This is one of my least favorite ones. I don't like this one very much. So my processes, I transferred the pattern of the composition paper onto the watercolor paper paper to create a new texture. I mean, 
I did experiment with that, but honestly, that was an accident. This is another piece that I don't really like. And the next one's also, it's just like one after the other. I don't really like them. This one is Fear. Um, I took risks by using a lot of black watercolor. I learned more about watercolor and color theory. I did. This piece is mid. It's just me being scared about going back to school after being homeschooled because that's how I was isolated. This one also, I hate this piece. I hate this one so much. I took a risk by blurring the people's faces to support the feeling of being out of place. I had to get up on a really high ladder to take this picture though, it was pretty, which was pretty fun. Oh, I hate this piece. Sometimes they're just not gonna be as good as the other ones and just, it just happens. Now this piece, this piece sucked the life out of me. This one's in my quality section. Um, this is true piece. I put heavy emphasis on the sun to display upcoming piece, the orange foreshadows Project 15. Um, that was BS, that was a BS, but I had nothing that, nothing else that was experimenting. Um, me going bold orange really was a big experiment, so I didn't have anything else. I hadn't done watercolor other than the other project, that, um, which was the, what was it, the Hope? Yeah, New Hope. Um, again, tied those two pieces together, bright saturated color watercolor, no ink, just using connecting factors that just overall made the entire concentration stronger. This is the quality description. Leaving my house symbolized my healing from my past displayed by my looking at my window silhouette. And you probably couldn't tell at first, but there I am, I'm in the window and I'm like, oh my god, you're leaving, that's crazy. And this is my last one. This one is a joy. This piece highly contrasts with my others, displaying with color and imagery my past versus my future. This one is big as well. Yeah, this piece took me forever and I low-key hate it. I kind of don't like it. It didn't, it like some of the frames are tilted. I personally think it's noticeable when you look at it for more than 30 seconds. Um, yeah, honestly. I think I've shared my biggest, my biggest helper things. Um, basically to summarize, collage, every single thing needs to be intentional. Make sure it's not teenagerish, make sure that it's not a stereotype, fully develop your idea, make it something personal to keep you motivated or just whatever it is that will keep you motivated it doesn't have to be something personal that's just something that helped me stay motivated while working on it um plan out the dates make sure because it's so easy to get overwhelmed and time management is really hard and when trying to do something this big like trying to get this really hard point to earn bruh. trying to do something like that, your time management is going to be really hard because you might also have other AP classes. Um, God forbid that you have AP US also when you're doing AP art because you're going to want to die. That's totally not what I did my 11th grade year. Oh my god. Do you see this man? Do you see this? Look at this. Look at this man. Why do you move like that? So yeah, those are my tips. I'm going to be inserting everything that I talked about. Just a bunch of basic AP things, because you might have a crappy teacher who might not tell you any of this. You might have a teacher. Like, I learned that some AP classes are just like, okay, you gotta have 15 pieces, no due dates, no nothing. You will suffer <laughs> they don't give you due dates make up your own you gotta just do what you gotta do yeah those are the tips that I have um, if you like a video like this if you want any more helpful tips because again I took AP art for two years I took AP lit I took AP lang AP US that was it I passed every single one of them 
5 in AP Lit, 3 in AP US, 4 in AP Lang. Um, you want any other tips for those? I got you. AP US is a huge one. Also, here's a tidbit of an animation that I'm working on. Please stick around for that because I've been working on this for a really long time. Of course, it's Diana, but obviously. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm Ash. Username, Skyfire146. Yada yada. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Do whatever you want. Um, thumbs up. Okay. I'm saying the YouTuber things. Yeah. Okay, bye.